show you your position with relation to the mean and the standard deviation. Now we want to talk about a different kind of measure position, the percentile, and with it comes the quartile. Now percentiles are abbreviated with capital P with a little subscript after it. And that subscript is the percent that will be below or equal to your value or to that particular value. And there are 99 per, um, percentile values that divide up your ordered data set into 100 equal parts. Order is important. You have to put the data in order from lowest value to highest value in order for this to work out. Low values on the left, high values on the right, etc. So the percentile is the, the value such that k percent of the observations are less than or equal to that value. I already said that. And that means that we already know one of the percentiles, namely the median. So the median is the 50th percentile because by definition, the median has 50% of the values below it and 50% above. So the median is the 50th percentile. And that means that if we use the symbols, it would be capital P with a little 50 after it. There we have it, P 50, 50th percentile. It's also a quartile. Um, so what happens with quartiles is they're kind of special percentiles that separate the data set into quarters. So there's four or three quartiles that separate the data set into four quarters, right? So there's the 25th percentile, which would be P25, which is Q1, the first quartile. It has 25% of the data below it. Then there's the 50th percentile, which is right here, which is the second quartile. And the second quartile is the 50th percentile, which is known as the median. And that would be the P50, but it's also Q2. Okay. All right, second quartile is, is the median. They're all the same. And that leaves us the 75th percentile for the last one. And those three numbers, the 25th, the 50th, and the 75th percentile separate your data set into four quarters, four equal quarters. So you have your P25, your P75, and your P50. Now they're not equal in terms of distance. Like They might be close together, they might be far apart. What, what they are is the percentage. That word right there is important to you. Right, the percent of the observations is equal. So you have 25% below the first one, then another section of 25s and 25 and 25 makes 50, so 50 below the median, and then three 25s makes 75, so 75 below the third one. All right, now suppose you take or you score in the 90th percentile in the ACT exam. What does that mean for you in comparison with all other ACT takers? Did you score well or poorly? Well, that means you scored very well, right? So scored very well because 90%, let's read it from here, 90% of the observations, so 90% of the um, ACT test takers scored um, less than or equal to my score. So you did extremely well. 90% of the test takers are less than equal to my score. Put another way, um, here. put another way, only 10% of the ACT test takers scored above my score. That's really well. That's doing very well on the ACT. All right, now let's actually go find some. So we have a data set here that's put in order. And actually, you can figure out what these numbers are by hand. You don't really need a calculator for this one, although I am going to enter their values in the calculator. So let me just show you a couple things. So I have all this, these data. These are um, a sample of Math 133 Exam 3 scores from winter 2014. Yes, these are real scores, in case you're wondering. And I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm going to go, well, first of all, I'm going to make that go away. So stat edit. I'm going to clear out some old columns here. I'm going to type in the new data set. So I'm going to go up and clear all of these. And I'm going to start typing 54, 56, and so on. All right, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go type all of these in. I'll be right back. All right, they're there. I'll type 10 now. So I'm going to run one variable stat, stat calculate one variable stat. I want to tell it list one, so second one, that's where my data are. I'm going to go down to calculate and run it. 
and there's my mean, which I might need later, 80.896. And I'm going to go grab the min, which is 54. Right There it is, that lowest number. The Q1 is 76, the median is 84, Q3 is 88.5, and the max was 93. So I'm going to type those numbers up down here. So this one was the min, 54. And then Q1, and I kind of want to show you where Q1 is. So Q1 is 76. And where is that coming from? It's coming from the average of these two cells right here. So the two of them, 75 and 77, would average out to be 76 because that's the median of this lower half of data. Here's your median right there. So let me give that a little highlight of green. I better pick that green. I don't think that green has a compatriot. All right, so then the median is 84, and you can tell just by seeing that it's the middle score. Right? And then now Q3 is going to be the average of these two values, which is 88.5. And sure enough, that's how it shows up. So 88.5. I'll give that a little highlight of, oops, just these values. Of blue. And there, those three. So what's happening is the quartiles are the medians of their respective halves, if you will. So here's 84. 84 separates the data into a lower half and an upper half. And then the lower half is in order. The median is the halfway spot between these two. And the upper half is right here, and the median is the halfway spot between those two. And rather, obviously, the max is 93. So that's not hard to see. There we have it. Okay. So if you wanted to make a note to yourself, you could say, you know, that this is the average of 75 and 77, and 88.5 is the average of 88 and 89. Of course, you can just do it with your calculator as well, but this is visually and um, technically what's happening. Now, different programs and different software like Minitab or StatCrunch, they might calculate the means and, or excuse me, the median and the quartile slightly differently. There are a couple different rules for how to calculate them, but this is what both the calculator does and what we do by hand. All right, suppose a score is in the 80th percent, oops, a score of 80, excuse me, is in the 35th percentile. What does that mean? Well, a couple things. One, you can tell that in symbols, it's P35 is equal to 80%. That's, a, that's what we're saying. So the 35th percentile, that's why it gets the little index of 35, is 80%. What that means is that 35% of the students who took that exam scored less than or equal to an 80%. And that also implies, by the way, this also implies that 65% of the students scored higher than an 80%. The part that students always screw up is the or equal to part. So it's below or equal to. And people often forget about the or equal to thing. Whereas this is just higher, right? So 35% is less than or equal to 80 or 80. And that means 65% of the students are higher than 80 which is really impressive when you think about it. I mean, an 80% is a good score, but 65% of the students scored above an 80. So they were an impressive bunch. All right, now let's look at a frequency, or excuse me, a percentile graph, which is called an ogive. You've seen them in chapter two, uh, section 2.3, I believe. Um, an ogive might not seem like a big deal, but it's actually kind of an important graph because these are the kind of graphs that doctors use to figure out where your child is at for the percentile for height and weight and so on. Actually, ACT, the company that makes those types of tests, does this kind of thing as well. And here I've drawn an ogive for the age and inauguration of the presidents. So how old they were when they were inaugurated. All right, so we start off with President Obama. President Obama was 47 when inaugurated. Approximately what percentile was he in? And interpret the meaning. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find his age. So his age is 47. So I'm going to go right here to 47. I'm going to draw a vertical line up and hit the graph. Then I want to draw a horizontal line across from that because I need to go figure out the percentile. So I'm going to take 
where that arrow hits, where that line hits. I'm going to drag it over here. And there we go. So he was about the 10th percentile. So about the 10th percentile, he is a young present. Um, this implies President Obama was a young president. It's not the youngest. I believe that was John F. Kennedy, just thinking off the top of my head. But he is on the young side. Okay. All right, now let's go in reverse. So... President T.J. Thomas Jefferson was in the 70th percentile for age when he was inaugurated. So how old was he? Interpret what that meaning of this is in a percentile. So if he's in the 70th, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line, but this time we're going to start not at age of 70, but at the 70th percentile. So we're going to start it right here. We're going to drag along, kind of draw as straight a horizontal line as he can. I mean, you're just kind of eyeballing it, but you don't want to be wobbly on that line. If worse comes to worst, um, grab a ruler or grab a straight edge so you can do it. And then you're going to draw a straight line down. Rulers really help with, with TJ in particular because he's um, farther away. This, this portion of the graph is farther away from the grid. I could actually technically go up as well because I have the numbers up on top. But And it looks like he's about 58 years old. Right, just shy of his 58th birthday or so. So, um, he's about 58 years old. Right, so P, in this case, 70. Is about 58. Technically, I should have approximation symbols in here because, you know, we're rounding a little bit, but you get the general idea. We don't know exactly how old they were from this graph, but right around there. Um, this implies that um, President Jefferson was an older president, um, as only, or, and there's two ways you can explain that, because 70% of the president's were his age or younger when inaugurated. Or put another way, or 30% or only 30% of the presidents were older than him. Oops, I spelled president wrong. That's never a good sign. there we have it. So now we have looked at percentiles in a couple different ways and the very important percentile graph and have looked at that. So I'll see you back here to talk about the interquartile range and measures of spread and outliers.